Hello, and thank you for watching this June 13th weather update, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribull. This past weekend brought the first serious heat the Corn Belt has seen in some time for mid-June. 90-plus degree Fahrenheit high temperatures spread throughout a large section of the United States as a large ridge in the jet stream pushed into Canada. Here's a look at the position of the jet stream on Sunday evening, and once again we see a flow pattern marked by a large ridge that allows heat and moisture to push into the central plains. This is the fourth or fifth time I have seen this pattern during this growing season, and we need to keep a very close eye on the position of the jet stream as we move toward the critical pollination time period over the next month or so. We have not seen persistent ridging in the central plains and midwest really since 2012. Now, before we get worried about having another summer like 2012, let's do a little comparison. First, let's look at the drought conditions of 2012. Here's the June 19th, 2012 U.S. Drought Monitor map. The devastating drought of 2011 in Texas had spread considerably by this time in 2012. Remember, though, this map was made just a few days before the rain really stopped in 2012 almost entirely. Well, here is the current drought monitor as of June 7, 2016. The largest difference is that there's only spotty dryness across the Corn Belt this year. So, 2012 is not an analogous year to 2016 in terms of precipitation up to this point in the season. So let's talk about temperature in comparison to 2012. This graph shows the high temperature in a solid red line and normal high temperatures in a dotted red line for central Illinois near Agribal headquarters. We're going to examine this region just for comparison's sake. Now low temperatures are shown in blue. Nearly every day from June 12th through July 13th was above average with several days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, it rained just three-tenths of an inch of rain over this 31-day stretch in 2012. Now for comparison, here's the same graph for 2015. Notice how temperatures during this time period were near or below average. Also notice how regularly it rained and how much it rained. The excess rain was troublesome in known wet spots across fields all over the eastern part of the Corn Belt, and overall nitrogen management was a challenge. Still, yields were pretty high. So while we're at it, we should also look at our best year ever in Illinois. This is the same graph for 2014. Temperatures were right around average for most of the time period, and we had frequent enough rain in large enough quantities to water the plants but avoid the flooding. The result was that Illinois averaged 200 bushels per acre for corn as a state. So, what are we expecting for 2016? Well, let's go back to the jet stream and look for some answers. This animation is showing us where we are expecting troughs and ridges in the jet stream over the next 16 days through June 28th. If the color shading is blue, that represents the anomalously lower heights found in a trough. The red shading represents higher heights found in ridges. This animation is showing us the forecast from 21 different model simulations, and a persistent feature in the forecast is ridging in the central United States. Remember, ridges are associated with warmer conditions, and as a result, June looks to finish warmer than average. This same forecast is shared with the ECMWF model, which is the European equivalent to the forecast model that you're seeing here. So, is this suggesting several days of 100 plus degree heat? Right now, the answer is no. What this does mean is that the forecast models are giving a very low probability of having any cooler than average days coming up for the rest of this month. Here are NOAA's 6 to 10 day and 8 to 14 day temperature probability maps. It is clear that the warm weather we saw building through the Corn Belt this past weekend will be sticking around for some time. While it may not get as hot as it did last Saturday and Sunday, Cooler air is not returning anytime soon to a large section of the Corn Belt. So what about precipitation? One thing is certain. Over the last week, the severe weather threat has shifted northward. This picture was taken by a close friend of mine and colleague, Professor Jeff Frame, while he was taking a dozen or so atmospheric science students from the University of Illinois out storm chasing for college credit. Well, this was a wall cloud forming on a large storm near Arrow Creek, Montana. This weekend also saw severe weather across northern Wisconsin, where a large squall line knocked down trees and damaged power lines, and even parts of Iowa and Minnesota were also hit this past week. 
Now, as this thunderstorm activity shifts northward, there is the worry that the southern part of the Corn Belt could dry out. So let's take a look at what we're expecting. Thankfully, a low-pressure system will be pushing through the central plains early this week, bringing a chance of rain along with it. With the rain, it will try to cool down to start off the week due to cloud cover, but expect temperatures in the 80s for a large part of the Corn Belt to start this week. The northern states will receive the bulk of this precipitation, but as the rain early in the week spreads east, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio will see some precipitation Monday night, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday. However, following this precipitation, there will potentially be several days of drying out. Furthermore, as this week's precipitation moves through the eastern part of the Corn Belt, not all regions will receive equal amounts and coverage of rain. Some locations will be missed. Now, given that there's not already big drought conditions across this same area, not having really frequent rainfall at this time of year isn't going to be a huge stress on the crop. But keep a close eye on your precipitation totals using Morning Farm Report's field-by-field -field analysis. And as always, we at Agrible will bring the latest and best weather forecast information through our Morning Farm Report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.